All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I'm actually down in Baltimore today with my friend Dave. He's the owner of Magathy Workshop. Uh, I think as part of the video today, Dave's gonna take us for a quick tour of his workshop. It's about a, what, a 200 square foot space yeah, here? Yeah, about, about 220 square foot space. Uh, and he's got some crazy tips and tricks, some really cool ways he's built uh, functionality into his, work, uh, his workbench here. And he's gonna take us on a tour of his shop. Now, Dave, why don't you tell us a bit of the uh, background of your shop, how you came up with the name, kind of what you've been doing the last five or six years down here? Yeah, well, howdy, folks. So. This is Magathy Workshop. I know it's pretty small, a lot of space is kind of maximized and everything, and we're gonna go through that here shortly. But Magathy Workshop, we live right on the Chesapeake Bay down here in Maryland, and about 50 feet outside of the back wall over here is the Magathy River. Okay. And what better to represent something local than to have a workshop on the Magathy River, and, and it just kind of, lo and behold, became Magathy Workshop. Okay, I, I thought for the last five years it was like a family name, but it's actually from the river. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So no, I mean, it's uh, it's been about five years running now. Uh, it started off small, which is a single workbench that I converted from a desk. Obviously it's grown a lot since then. Um, I probably spend more time down here actually doing storage than and trying to optimize space and actually doing projects, much like a lot of people that are in their shops. So yeah, but it's, it's fun though. I love doing it. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to doing more. Yeah. Right. And maybe just one last question for you. What got you into woodworking? So now, Dave and I go way back. Uh, when we were younger, we both were into cars. We used to do some work on cars together. I think I swapped an axle for them one time. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so what got you into woodworking? So I uh, so obviously love building anything with my hands. If you want something nice, I figured why not you build it. And uh, you know, I always took the woodshop classes in high school, auto mechanics, things like that. So, I mean, much like cars, I also like sculpting things out of wood. You know, I mean, you can kind of really use a lot of creativity there. Uh, if you make a mistake, you can turn it into something else. Um, there's nothing like really the smell of fresh cut walnut as well. So, uh, I really kind of gravitate to, you know, building, crafting things with your hands. All right, well, cool. Well, look, guys, um, we're going to take go on a quick tour with Dave around his shop. Let's check it out. All right, guys, now being a uh, height challenge, but in like, I think a positive way in this case, I'm gonna have to watch my head as I walk around Dave's workshop, but that's okay. Um, Dave, why don't you, all right, so what, what do you have over here? What are we starting with? Tell us about this area. Yeah, well, so as you can see here, I've got a hose reel that goes to the compressor that's right there in that first workbench that was converted from an old, like, restaurant so your, storage your compressor's table. down here? Yep, so if I lift this up, Compressor's right underneath of there. Okay. Some more storage. This obviously is a knife sharpening area, for polisher and everything. So uh, a lot of these pull-up tables and everything that I use, um, that's some drywall behind there, but I've got all my levels, uh, jigsaws, uh, two different types here, uh, pneumatic tools, nail guns, cordless nail guns. Uh, this one's probably my favorite, the little uh, uh, Brad nailer there. But um, but yeah, and then we go into one of the smaller circ saws, planer. Um, Obviously, a lot of yellow tools, a lot of Dewalt tools, so yeah. uh, they're great tools. That's, Highly that's recommend. The, that's the same. That's the same brand that I have at home, guys. As you've seen in some of my videos. Hopefully, if you haven't, go watch them. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's um, you know, and uh, I believe that one of the leaf blowers here is one of the reviews that you've done. But uh, yep, yep. got a lot of the uh, clamps and things like that. As we kind of group everything together, I've got a random pressure washer here, but you know, it's wall space. So, so, so these clamps here, I guess, yeah. is there a certain size that you? would recommend if you wanted to have a one size does all is the bigger always better yeah i mean honestly i mean for space and everything the smaller ones are great but i mean it's all you can't go larger with a clamp that's limited this size so i mean if you right. get something that's a little bit larger you can always you know you can always drill it down into the size you need so bigger is kind of better but you know obviously they get to be pretty big so like this size gets used a lot because it's in that in between depending on what you make okay all right, and then as you think about all the uh, the black and yellow DeWalt tools here, I see a lot of nailers, I see the planer. I know the planer comes in handy when you're woodworking because no wood's ever true. I guess, what is a must have here on this wall? Oh gosh. Um, or are, so they all, are they all must haves? They are all pretty much must haves. Uh, when building and assembling things, uh, this nailer here has been used an awful lot. It's great for holding things together. And what kind of nailer is that? So this is a uh, this is a DCN 623 uh, DeWalt. This is a 20 volt brushless. Um, uh, powered cordless nailer. So, I mean, this is, is like 20, a Brad nailer. Or? Yeah, 23 gauge. Okay, so, 23 gauge. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, super easy to reload. As you can see, I've got some nails in there now. Yep. But, uh, but anyways, a lot of these things here, I mean, they're fantastic for slightly larger projects. You know, if you're hanging shutters on a shed or something like that, these are really great to have. Um, both angled and non angled, 16 and 18 gauge. And, and show them how you have them mounted on the wall there. That's actually yeah. pretty cool. So, again, with going with storage, I use a lot of these. You know, I just pick these up on Amazon, a few bucks. I mean, you get about 10 of them or so. 
and they just hang right on where the battery clips onto. So it's okay. super easy where you can kind of grab and go. All right, so that's that's one section of your wood shop here. We're gonna walk around all the walls. Dave's gonna take us through all of his various tools. Then I think you also have some goodies kind of built into your workbench that we'll, yeah. get, to, we'll get to eventually here. And he's got his whole dust and vacuum station here, which we'll come to all that. But we can keep going now and see what uh, what else you have on this wall. Yeah, so I mean, I've got a smaller circ saw here, six and a half inch, and then of course the planner here for you know smaller handheld jobs. So um, kind of got everything held in. This is all on a French cleat. Highly recommend French cleats. They're very modular. You can hang different things on them. You can build them yourself very easily with just two by fours. Okay. Yeah. So uh, got all the sanding stuff here, um, and I use the same thing with some of the craftsman tools. So I mean. Owned by the same company as is DeWalt. Uh, so, so Craftsman's owned by uh, Sydney Black and Decker? They are, yes. I did not realize that. Yeah, this is a, kind of a remake of the mouse sander, you know, from way back in the day. But a lot of things, again, like if you figure out where to put it, these little hanging devices right here really do a great job. So a little router there. Okay, they um, come in different colors too, it looks like. Yeah, so yeah. You can match them with your uh, DeWalt's and your yeah, yeah. and everything else. So okay. it's like a little, you know, mustard and ketchup here. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> do have some Makita tools. I think they're also pretty good. You Bigger clamps. Yep. Um, you know, and then even bigger clamps. So, I mean, if you're doing things like tables and everything, these are really great to have. Um, you know, if you want something that's going to have, you know, 1,000, 1,200 pounds of clamping pressure for those really big slabs, these are a go-to. These things right here are incredibly strong. These pipe clamps, they're about the strongest as, as they come. So, um, but yeah, no, that's kind of a walk down the rest of this. Got some other little tools, a vacuum, and, and then a uh, recip saw there. No, and then I have some more cleaning tools right here. So this right here is a brushless cleaner. Um, it's a Craftsman, so this is great for cars and everything. So I kind of got a mixed bag of things. Right. So it's kind of like a, a one-size-does-all uh, does all shop down here. You've got the automobile, you've got the woodworking, and I'm trying not to hit my head here on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works for me, you know, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little shorter, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, and then we go into, you know, I've got a heat gun here. There's endless things for that. Um, I've got what's, you know, a little battery inverter here, which is nice. So, I mean, if power goes out, you just plug this right onto a battery, get yourself power. So, so, so guys, the, uh, I'm going to need that, the, uh, the heat gun, I need to invest in one of those. I just got chastised on one of my recent uh, YouTube videos where I made, where I made Christmas light extension cords. And I used a Bic lighter to uh, melt the, uh, <laughs> the shrink wrap. And I, I got a lot of crap from a uh, certified electrician for that. So be like him, not like me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's always good to have the right tool for the job, even though sometimes you got to improvise. But and that's true. Just I guess on that topic, it's a good point, Dave. I mean, how many thousands of dollars have you saved um, or earned by having these tools versus you know like what it would have costed you if you hadn't have had these tools? Like you wouldn't have been able to make these boards. Oh yeah, you uh, wouldn't have been as successful. I mean, I, I just can't imagine like. The amount of time you would have invested and burned out probably, right? Yeah, and I mean, and these are tools that last a lifetime. I mean, you take good care of them and everything, they'll last a long time. You'll get a lot of value out of them. And I mean, things just like building a bench or something like that for your kids or, you know, a foot table or something like that or a side table or a coffee table. I mean, you can go out and buy it. That's great. But you're going to spend, you know, a quarter as much as building it yourself. And you get the experience to say like, hey, I built that. And yeah. that's what I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I, uh, I faced the same thing when I was working on my cars. I finally bit the bullet, bullet and just bought like the thousand dollars in tools I needed, and it saved me hundred thousand dollars the yeah. last ten years of my life. Always, always buy nice, <laughs> not twice. So, <laughs> but uh, now we kind of get more into the other workbench right here that's right. on the side. This was the original one. This, this is what era we all started. So this was my old desk back in high school. You know, as you can see from the Formica and the particle board, it's still around. It's, uh, it's there. Um, but uh, anyways. A lot of these smaller hand tools and everything. And then, of course, I've got chargers, a whole wall of things here. Um, you know, as we really kind of get into every little space here for things like drill bits, every little space okay. has kind of been utilized. There's more French cleats here. So as you can see, you know, it just hangs like that. So it's nice if I can move it around if I want to. Just hang it up right there. And you just cut those on the circular saw? Or how'd you cut those? Uh, table saw. Table saw? Yeah. Okay. You can cut them on a circular saw with the angle. You can cut them on a table saw. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's really not all that... Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the easiest things to put together, and, and it really gives you a lot of benefit of moving these around. Okay. All right, so now we get over to this wall here. As you can see, I have a lot of drills. So, you know, we have Makita, we've got Craftsman, we've got, you know, obviously a little glue gun there too. So uh, some polishers, you know, uh, everything from, you know, your small little 12-volt guys right here that have different attachments. This is probably my most used drill, DCD 703F1, highly recommend. Um <laughs> And, then, I, and I, I had that same one, Dave, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the beast here, the DCD-999. So this right here, um, just unapologetic power when you have this thing with a 15-amp-hour battery. So yeah, yeah. highly recommend that for big jobs. Um, but, yeah, no, it's uh, 
And then I have this rack over here, more DeWalt stuff, as you can see. So this is a smaller recip saw, just a little 12 volt. Okay. Don't share the 12 volt stuff. This actually will cut pallets, no problem. This will cut through a four by four post. Um, so 12 volt stuff still puts out a good amount of power. Okay, do those come in anything beyond 12 volt? Um, as far as- Is there like a tool line that's dedicated to 12 volt? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I didn't yep. realize that. Okay. So the, like the Atomic series and stuff like that, the Extreme Subcompact series, things like that. Um, as you can see that, that logo there, yeah. it's on the same one that's on the drill over there. Um, that's kind of like their smaller, like pocket power type of, uh, tools or whatnot. So, okay. um, but yeah, the 12 volt stuff's great. The batteries are nice and small. So, but I mean, oh, again, wow. they put out a nice punch. They have a good amount of battery life to them as well. Oh, great. So, um, is that, but a belt, is that a belt sander of this? This is a belt sander. This is one of, uh, DeWalt's newer products here. So cordless belt sander is fantastic to have 99% dust collection out of this. So these things make a mess. Well, not with this when you have the dust collection hooked up to it. Okay, so, wow. Highly that's, recommend That's that. actually uh, great to hear because a lot of my uh, dust collection tools don't do a great job at collecting the dust. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and then I have some outdoor stuff here too. You know, pole saw for chainsaws and everything else. You know, you got to have a chainsaw. And who yeah. just wants one? You know, you got to have multiple chainsaws. That's so, right. That's right. You know, so uh, I believe you have one yourself. I do. I just did a video on it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, by the way, let's talk about that real quick. So, if you guys saw my recent video on the, uh, I hit my head again, the uh, DeWalt. <laughs> DeWalt chainsaw, I think, Dave, the feedback I got from one of the comments was it needs a more aggressive chain. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know anything about chainsaw aggressiveness, but uh, or chains rather, but that's what they were saying online. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think yours was the 16-inch one, so there is a 20-inch one. It's an 18-inch one. Oh, it's 18 18-inch? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, this one right here actually does a pretty good job. It's a small little 8-inch guy. Okay. It's got a 15-foot pole on it, so it really is great for pruning. Also, the same kind of attachment here will go on a uh, hedge attachment. All right, so we've gone through the chainsaws. We've gone through really the whole, I'll say, right side of uh, your workshop here. And we've already covered, I mean, I'm, Dave, I'm looking at here like, I don't know, what is that, like 100 tools already? Give or take, yeah. <laughs> I've lost through? count. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, well, there's more. We're only halfway through it. So let's, let's keep going here. Plus, we have your workbench still, so. Yeah. Self-explanatory, but why don't you go ahead and just take us through it? So this was this was given to me by my father. This is a DW716. It's uh, from about 2007. Um, you know, with regular maintenance, this thing still cuts like no other. It's it's great. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's it's a fantastic 12-inch uh, miter saw. Okay. Um, and then you know, obviously blades and things like that. Here, I've got another uh, belt sander here. It's a quarter Plug cable. In. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, that the, the got, only pro porter cable tool I have is actually a uh, the buffer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do you, do you have that? I have one of those yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it looks like you've got a few, just a few belts up here. Yeah, the, yeah. Now I've got a few belts. belts there, and then um, as you can see here, this is a rotating workbench. So this is an older model Craftsman had. So oh, wow. there's a joiner here, and then another belt sander over there. And this yeah. just the two sides pull out, and you can actually rotate this thing around. So a nice three in one tool setup here. That is wild. More I've space never seen savings. This <laughs> Did you buy this new or did? No, I uh, actually bought it from a friend of mine who works uh, where I work. So he was getting rid of it and I felt it was perfect for the shop. Again, all in the name of sa saving space. And how often do you use each of those? I'm, just, I'm kind of amazed. I, I didn't know this was here when I came in. Guys. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is, pretty, <laughs> so, this is pretty cool. <laughs> so honestly, um, you know, the, the miter saw gets used probably the most, uh, followed by the belt sander and then, uh, and then the joiner. So obviously, um, as far as joining, I, I do favored the hand tools and whatnot um so uh but this still gets used and it, it's great for speed and everything else so but uh but i'd say this probably gets used the least it's still a great tool but the miter saw definitely yeah. uh takes the cake as far yeah. as usage yeah miter saw in my house gets used a lot i'm doing my uh I'm doing my basement right now so the miter saw has been it's paid it's paid for itself in like the first 20 cuts honestly every household should yeah. have one every household should have one. <laughs> all yeah. right so we got the saws we got the other uh, table we've got some wood storage over here which I know you said a lot of guys spend more time on uh, storage than actually yeah. using their shop to make anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's um, it's really easy to start hoarding this stuff too. So, uh, you know, I do have a burn pile, which only the smallest of scraps go into. But a lot of this is just, as you can see, old deck boards here. This is where you get into your hardwoods, uh, all stored up on the shelf. Um, so basically uh, everything from your walnuts, cherries, sapele, you know, all different hardwoods for things like cutting boards, coasters, things like that. And then what's, um, what's over here? So this is just more like just pine and stuff up top. Okay. Um, you know, just some cutoffs and particle board and stuff. This is where I get into the smaller pieces of the hardwoods. And then the uh, thing next to it over here, this just, it's just a bunch of stuff that gets dumped in there. And this is your <laughs> dust storage bin here? Yeah, so that's a that's one of the two stages of dust collection that I have. So, so which yeah, is a multi-stage dust yeah. storage. Okay. Yeah, that, that took a bit to get together. <laughs> right. So um, for the 
uneducated, why do we have multiple stages of dust collection? So you don't want to breathe it in. So having a mask and safety, just like your, you know, your eyes and ears and everything when you're cutting, but uh, multiple stages, this is a cyclonic flow here. So when it goes in here, it actually spins around, separates some of the materials. Then it goes into the main dust collector and goes into this collection bag. It's a three micron bag. So it really filters out an awful lot. And you just don't, you don't want to be walking around in a bunch of uh, dust in here. So, I mean, it's, you know, something like this four inch pipe, you know, um, it takes a little bit of research to kind of piece it together, but in the end, I've been very satisfied with this. And I, and if you don't mind me asking, just as a guy who's, I'm currently getting doing my basement right now, there's sawdust everywhere. Cause on rainy days, I have no choice but to cut in my basement. I'm just wearing like a safety mask from Home Depot. What is a contraption or a setup like this one? Do you think on average? Oh, uh, cost and everything. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the dust collector, the you know, the main unit here from Grizzly, yeah. um, you know, they make excellent tools. So, I mean, uh, the wall mount right here, uh, this was about two twenty or so. Okay. It's not, um, I mean, it's expensive, but it's not crazy. Yeah. I mean, this right here, I think I paid 40 bucks for it. Okay. Uh, and then the piping right here, I mean, you can go to your local like hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, yeah, whichever. Yeah. I mean, and you just have a 40 PPC. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And then the blast gates right here for multiple tools. You know, you can hook it up to multiple things. Oh, so these, these slide open. To yep, close. they open and close. So you can control the amount of suction, I guess, being made if you shut some of them off. Yep. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, yeah. if you're using this tool, you open up this one right here, make sure the other two or the other ones are, are shut. shut. That way it's just you turn out, it on. And I actually have a remote yeah. switch. So, um, so basically, this, this is always in the on position, but I've got a remote switch over there. So wherever I am in the shop, I can turn it on and off. Huh, so for right. 10 bucks, that was a no-brainer. And I see you have the Craig jig here. Oh yeah. So, I mean, this right here, great for your circular saws, especially if you're cutting things like plywood, you know, your four by eight sheets. Yep. Um, yep. I mean, that is a must have. Okay. So, right. Yeah. All right. Well, good news on the dust collection though. It's not thousands of dollars because yeah. when I first saw this, I was thinking it would be at least a thousand. So it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's good. It's good. Oh yeah. You can get that and high. Plus up. like safety first, right? Cause you shouldn't yeah. be breathing in a lot of this dust. It's not good for you on days where I'm cutting in the basement and I'm breathing all the dust. It's yeah. uh my lungs are hurting the next day. That could be the fiberglass from the ceiling too. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, it's uh, <laughs> gotta die, you gotta die of something though, right? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah, no, that's part of it. Um, and as you pan over right here, there's more, yeah. you know, kind of finer dust oh, collection. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, you know, right above the workbench. There's more wood storage over here. Okay. Uh, so this is kind of more of your basic pine. I do have some hardwoods down here, but you know, your larger slabs are here, uh, and then I've got some more that's right up over here. Yeah. So everywhere I could put it, it's just. That's where it is. Okay. And I, you got your shot back, which is self-explanatory. We don't have to go into that. And then you've got the planer, which I'm not sure everybody knows what a planer is. If you want to maybe just take us through that yeah. real quick. So basically what a planer is, is that it is a, inside here is a rotating assembly of blades, which basically flatten or, you know, a uh, shave a piece of wood to be completely smooth. So you could take something that's rough like this and actually turn it into something that's smooth like this. So there's an in feed and an out feed. And basically you put it in the in feed, you, you dial in your height right here, and then it comes out the other end and it's nice and smooth. So it really it. cuts down a lot of sanding. Got it. And I, I have done a, a bit of research on these. I think the biggest size it takes is two by 10 or two by 12. Uh, this is a 13 inch right okay. here. So okay. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This is the DW735 planer from uh, DeWalt. And, and I guess if you are considering getting one of these, I mean, it's helpful for what you do, which we'll get into, I think in the next video, but you know, if you're out there and you want to make like a barn table for your dining room, like these are kind of a must have, I think. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a planer is, I mean, between, you know, the miter saw, planer and a table saw, those are the trifecta as far as, you know, any kind of big woodworking projects that are really going to save you in time, cost. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I, you know, another thing too, guys, is like, these are really expensive, but we talked about a few minutes ago, like this is a, you know, six to $800 investment new, maybe you can find one, uh, you know, use on, on Facebook marketplace. But if you build one barnwood table for you and your family, it's paid for itself. Yep. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, you sell two, you just made money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. You're okay. in the green. <laughs> You're in the green. <laughs> yeah. So obviously I have a pretty big slab back here. Still kind of figuring out what I want to do with that one, but uh, nice. that's going to probably be a nice table. You one should day make that bench. into a bench maybe. Yeah. 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 I think something like that. I'm going to put some Dutchman's in it and stuff, some joinery, but yeah. So, I mean, we kind of get into the kind of the other end of the shop here, more dust collection. You know, you can never have too much of that. Yeah, okay. Another, um, another filter up there. Yeah. Another yeah. filter, another HEPA filter. And this is just kind of a utility shelf. Some of the finishing things on here, some more DeWalt stuff, paints, you know, various things kind of wind up on this shelf here. Um, and then there's some more storage underneath there. Everything's labeled, you know, for different things between plumbing, machining, you know, uh, hardware, things like that. So these things are excellent to have. They stack up and, uh, these are mixed between DeWalt and Stanley products. Um, well, I think that's the perimeter of the shop. I think Dave, you're going to take us through is the, uh, the workbench next and what's around the workbench. Obviously there's a lot of 
various tools up here as well. Dave's built some really cool stuff into the functionality of the workbench. So why don't we go through that? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so kind of starting from the front here. I mean, this right. this is a uh, this was a lot of this was made with repurposed wood. So the top right here, this is uh, 29, 30 seconds thick plywood. So it's extra hard stuff, and it's sealed with linseed oil. Highly recommend that for keeping kind of the things from getting into the wood. But uh, a lot of storage and everything's built into this. So saw blades, uh, you know, it gets a little dusty, but I mean, I have some storage bags and things like that underneath of here. Uh, saw blades. So if you have, you know, little ones running around, things like this are hidden. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. Keep uh, little um, fingers away from sharp objects. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, as we kind of move over here, um, I have a lot of fold out tables. So this comes out here, this folds up. Wow. And then when you're working right here, you could have your tools below the grade of the workbench. So when you have something big, you're not knocking tools off of here. So everything sits right here. So hold up to 90 pounds. So, you know, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been really handy. And then a, uh, a nice little mitering jig storage underneath here, which goes right on the table. Uh, so this really is all about storage, isn't it? Oh yeah. Everything's been kind of thought of. And you know, like I said, I spend more time doing this than I do, I think building things. <laughs> so this kind of folds flat and holds secure. Vice right here, um, this front vice I added uh, a few years ago. Uh, this workbench also has two circuits of dedicated power. So I put in two circuits, uh, 20 amp uh, for these 15 amp tools and for the shop back as well. Yeah, and I guess, I guess, guys, one thing, and I'll have Dave comment because he knows uh, way better than I do about this, but this is a wood vice, right? So you don't want to go out to like your local hardware store and buy a metal vice and then try to make a, fa a fancy piece of uh, wood out of that because it's going gonna, it's gonna to gouge it, right? I mean, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, this is kind of more for rough stuff. So when I begin kind of doing the joinery work and everything, I don't put finished stuff in here. So I mean, when, I'm, when things are kind of still rough, that's what I'll put in this vice. And then I obviously have tracks and everything that I've added in here. So I could put, you know, I can clip things in and hold things down okay. as far as uh, stuff from up here. So, um, you know, kind of holding things down when I'm sanding it and such. So, uh, but T-Tracks are, are great for any workbench. So where can you buy the T-Tracks? Uh, these actually got online. You can get them from Rockler, you can get them from Amazon, you can get them from, okay. um, you know, and these are pretty much standard size uh, and a lot of things will go right into them. So, um, yeah, they're really, really versatile. And as we kind of continue on over here, uh, if you want to swing back around this way, yep. there's a lot more kind of going on. I have a uh, onboard, you know, uh, power for these shop backs. So I mean, obviously, oh, you so there's keep... another shop back under here. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that one's just got power at one all the time. Yep, yep. So this is just a uh, this is a nice Craig remote switch, or actually, it's just a hardwire switch. Um, and you can you actually have outlets behind it, so you can power up, you know, uh, like the lathe and stuff like that that I have here. Um, there's a whole there's a whole lathe under here. Yeah, so <laughs> if I if I flip this up, um, these little latches, this actually folds up. This sits down into here, and then this actually comes out. So this is all on heavy duty uh, slides, oh, wow. and this is where the wood turning takes place. So uh, I actually have a little bench that I just I sit down over here. And then um, this actually kind of keeps all the dust and everything contained in here. So that is wild. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's trying to fit again as much space as as much functionality into a small space as you can. If if you guys aren't picking up on like again, this is a two hundred and twenty square foot space that we're in right now, and I think Dave, you fit more into this shop than most woodworkers <laughs> fit into in a thousand square foot. Shop. Yeah, I was so, gonna say if it ever comes time to moving. If it ever comes time to moving out of this house, it's going to take a while to get everything out of here. Yeah, I'll be so. coming back from Connecticut to help you pack this up and, <laughs> and move. Uh, one of the things I recently added was a slide out um, for uh, all the little tools that you're going to use. Uh, if you flip around yeah. over here, you can yeah, yeah. see it. Uh, but yeah, this is okay. also repurposed from, you so, know. So what are these though? These are. are uneducated? Yeah, no. So these right here are uh, chisels, uh, carving chisels for the lathe. So you have various ones right here for, you know, roughing things in or actually just shaping a piece of wood. Um, you know, while it's on the lathe, these are all magnetically held. Uh, you can do a more of a deeper gouge right here for things like stems on glass or not glasses, but you know, goblets and things like that. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, again, more storage, it kind of folds away nice and neat. And as you're sitting right here, you can just grab it, grab the next tool and go. Okay. Yeah. At the end of the video, I'm going to have to ask you kind of how you learned to do all this, but let's, let's say that to we're done the, uh, the bench here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we go right around over here, there's another fold out table and, this is for a router. So built my own fence, more T-tracks. You have all your router bit storage underneath the here. Um, you know, on off switch. So a little pocket router there, all folds up nice and neat. You know, so uh, this was probably one of my favorite ads. Um, just for when, you know, you want to do something really quick. You don't want to bring out the router. Um, but yeah, everything sits nice and flush. It's all on MDF here. So, you know, it's nice and strong, nice and flat. So a little dirty as well. But 
Um, As it should be. Yeah, shows that it's used. Um, there's another drawer right here that pulls out. And this is a drum sander here. So right now it's in the process of being rebuilt, um, kind of maintained uh, as I do with a lot of the tools. So it is a little dirty, but it's getting rebuilt. But uh, nonetheless, though, uh, I take this uh, seat right here, which kind of rolls all around, and I can sit here and just run things through the drum sander, which is good for like end grain stuff and everything. So yep. similar to a planer overall, but it, it can do some things that a planer can't do. Wow. Okay. So yeah, uh, there's more storage underneath the here. So this is all I call it nail gun ammo. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so these are actually quite heavy nails. You can put a bunch of them together. They're actually quite heavy. Don't, uh, you know, he's laughing about calling it nail gun ammo, but if anybody's seen lethal weapon, I don't know if it was one or two, but <laughs> it can be lethal. It can yeah, be ammo. Absolutely. Yeah, they really can be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I also do a lot of it, my own blade sharpening. So, um, at the same time, this is another thing, as you can see, another pullout table. Um, this right here is just a simple, you know, I mean, it's from Harbor Freight. You put your blades on here, and then you can actually do your own um, saw blade sharpening on here. So um, this is kind of like the sharpening area, as you can see, like polishing, yeah. sharpening, and then everything's kind of in this own little area over here. Just out of curiosity, again, for the uneducated, how uh, often slash how much time do you have to spend sharpening your blades? Um, I'd say that, uh, especially if you're cutting anything with a lot of sap, that really does a lot of damage on blades, harder woods, things like that. Um, I'd say probably once every, I'd say maybe a couple times a year okay. yeah so okay. yeah depending on what you're cutting but yeah it's uh but it's kind of a nice little thing to have um it's kind of one of those i never had a place for it so this kind of seemed to fit <laughs> yeah no that's that's a lot built into um you know it's actually a pretty good size bench i want to come back over here real quick it's actually a pretty good size bench um what's that it's like what's five feet by about seven eight feet uh it is a it's roughly six by four Six by four. All right, I was yeah. I was uh, way off. Um, <laughs> You're close. Yeah, but uh, that's a lot built in to a table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff happens here, and and again, like in all in the name of trying to save space. It's yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And cool. it wasn't all overnight. This took about this took three or four years to put together. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've been watching Dave for the last uh, four or five years on Instagram. We post occasionally. We'll uh, put all that up on on the screen here. But um, he's gotten a lot cooler tools <laughs> during that the last five or so year period and uh, he's come a long way as far as the workbench i mean i think one of your one of your posts a couple of years ago it looks i think you spent like how long just on this workbench just building this yeah. uh the bare workbench itself uh this used to this was longer uh my wife wanted it shorter <laughs> so okay uh just because it encroached into the laundry area but uh this took about this took uh, close to about a month to fully kind of design, think out and build and kind of fit the table saw right in here. So, you know, this is a contractor saw. So, I mean, it kind of behaves yeah. a little bit more like a cabinet saw when it's on something bigger like this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, is there anything else in the shop you wanted to go over real quick? I saw you have a couple of things up here, maybe just worth. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. I know how important some of these chisels are to work working. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of like the speed rack here. So I stand, I spent a lot of time standing here. So a lot of things that I need smaller clamps, you know, um, you know, I can, it's nice to have them kind of right there. Uh, everything right here, you know, I mean, you're always losing pencils and such. Uh, I've got little magnetic held, you know, things right here. So uh, all the quick little things are right here. Uh, the one of the things that I do, uh, I did add was a pull down uh, storage area for all of the hand tools. So um, this kind of starting to utilize that space in between the joists right here. Yep. And, uh, and again, like when you're finished with it, you can kind of just fold it right up. And I've got another one over there that holds paints and everything. So uh, everything is up and out of the way. And when you're finished with it, you just put it right back away and again, and it's out of the way. All right, man. Well, cool shop. Uh, again, you've squeezed a ton into this kind of small space, all things considered, but it's, it's crazy, man. It is, I mean, how you've organized everything, like the tools that you have, uh, how you maintain your tools. It blows my mind. Now, before we sign off, I've asked you to bring down a couple things here, just so you guys can see the kind of work that Dave does and what you guys can pick up from him. So why don't you just take us through a couple examples here just yeah. to show the audience. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm not tinkering around in the shop, so, you know, the minority at the time here, uh, do things like cutting boards and such. So ones like this that, you know, kind of more for charcuterie, but you can use it as a cutting board. It has multiple types of wood on it, you know, between your walnuts, oaks, sapeles, you know, um, maple, things like that. And then dip bowls, which are, I actually use magnets to hold everything on there. I was so, just going to ask you, so there's magnets on the bottom that you put in? Magnets on the bottom there, as you can see. And they're and, sealed with the wood. Okay. Yep, they're sealed in there. They're all neodymium magnets. And then I've got the same thing here. And then kind of lines up. And just so you guys can see this too on camera, he's got the nice little kind of, is this a drip, drip tray here? What is this? Yeah, it's like a little, uh, it's like a little juice groove or whatnot, but you can put like dips and stuff like that. And it kind of turned into that. It actually wasn't intended to do that, but that's kind of the thing with wood is you can kind of, 
it can kind of, it's just progressive elaboration. So yeah, that wasn't planned, but it kind of turned out all right. Yeah, so cool. yeah, but uh, yeah, and some other things here, you know, uh, mm -hmm. things like coasters and such. So, you know, a lot of these were made with just like furniture I found, you know, these, this came from the wood of a futon. Um, and this is the various like species of wood. So, you know, you've got ash, sapele, um, you've got some um, olive wood that's right here, which is really, really nice. Uh, it smells great when you cut it. Um, and then some thicker pieces right here. But, you know, each one of these coasters are something different. So something that kind of all fits into one, you know, rack right here. And you've, you've made like a custom holder for each of these, right? So, yeah. again, you can see like the, the groove here, nice angled cut. Um, these are actually pretty cool. I like these kind of more than the other ones. But these are what, squared off pieces of wood kind of? Yeah put together and this was actually at one point an old cutting board so you know i kind of retired one of the old boards um and these are just cutoffs and then this was just a cutting board that i refinished ran it through the planer and then just uh refinished it so i mean it's it kind of gives it another purpose instead of throwing it out you know you use it for something else and how, how many uh coats of poly do you put on these uh so i use actually a gel poly so one coat after the uh after the natural stain one coat of the uh of the gel poly from uh, old masters it's great stuff do you get the stain down after that at all like thousand yeah. grit you're just one coat and you're done it's wipe finished, on it's finished wipe finished on product. and good to go yeah there's no second guessing it there's none of those games with the finish work the or, anything. or anything it's perfect yeah yeah. Okay. yeah good to know yeah um, you know, one other thing here, I've got the, you know, kind of a checkerboard design right here, as far as the three different types of wood, another cutting board end grain. So, I mean, you've got your oak, sapele, and walnut, um, kind of looks like a bookend when it's, when it's kind of standing up, but this is great for, you know, if you have a, uh, if you have a bar for cutting lemons and stuff, but so. yeah, again, again, guys, look how meticulous this is though. I mean, that's individual pieces of wood that you had to put together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's everything kind of all glued this, together. It's dense also. It's heavy. Yeah, and that's the thing, like the amount of um, oil and stuff. So I soak it in oil for, in mineral oil for 24 hours to get everything in there. I also use Type Bond 3, about the best wood glue you can get. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I basically uh, put seal it all in beeswax. So all that oil and everything stays in there. So I mean, for sanitiz um, sanitizing reasons and everything else. Um, yeah, no, I mean, this, this is a nice solid piece. Things like this will last you for years and years to come. That's cool. Yeah. And you got what? One more? One more over here. So this is one that I that I'll probably never give up. But this is one of the first kind of uh, more exotic looking cutting boards, charcuterie boards, whichever. This is a piece of walnut, um, and this was the last piece after a bench that I made, and it was the perfect size. And I kind of like the one side right here that you know it's kind of cut right into it with this piece. It looks something that looks a little more yeah. unique. So let's show them this. So guys, check this out. So obviously it's not a uh, perfectly flat piece of wood. Did you put this through your planner? Uh, that one did go through it, okay. um, you know, carefully. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you can see here because it's not level, not flat. He had to build this footer over here, which yeah. again, you can see it's been nicely kind of machined into that piece of yeah. wood, right? The one thing I like about this too, is if you look closely is I have dowels. So this is actually going cross grain. So to keep this in here, I actually drilled dowels that go right into here and it no goes way. all the way through. So oh, yeah, you can see, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and uh -huh. it's just a really unique piece i mean walnut you really get a lot of that dramatic grain and everything with the live edge and, and so on and so forth so every one of these are numbered and, and stamped so uh but yeah this is probably my favorite piece yeah that's awesome yeah cool. well hey look before we wrap it up um I have a couple things we wanted to just talk about quickly one is tool maintenance so why don't you just kind of explain your process for tool maintenance yeah. whether it's the drills and the motors or it's it's the saws and the blades that kind of what's your process yeah so i'm pretty meticulous when it comes to that um you know you buy nice not twice i mean dewell tools regardless of the tool itself you can make them last for forever um you know the key is just maintenance like automobiles and everything else you keep them running the oil change and everything else much like tools you keep things kind of greased up you keep the blades sharp um you, you're very careful with them um i probably i would say on the planer that we talked about earlier that gets broken down probably once every few months uh the blades get rotated they get cleaned I, uh, I take the compressor with the uh, air jet nozzle and I blow all the dust out of it. I re-oil up the chain. Uh, now, how, how much of that's in the actual instructions when you buy it? Like a novice like me, he may buy that planter just to make like one table. Like, is it, are the instructions going to say to do all this? They will. I mean, they, they may not go into the mm -hmm. depth of, you know, re-oiling up the chain and things like that. But swapping out the blades is a pretty common thing, you know, yeah. and they're reversible blades on that particular one. Oh, but great. yeah. Okay. Um, Things like the drills, I'll, I'll actually dust out and everything with the air blaster. And, you know, for the older brush drills, change out those brushes. If it starts to lose power or whatnot, I mean, you can maintain them and the motors will last a very long time. Great, great, cool. Yeah. Well, Dave, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? Now, Dave does not have a website. I will pop up on the screen some of his information here. But why don't you tell everybody how to find you if they're interested in getting uh, coasters or a cutting board or anything else yeah. that you may have available? Yeah. So, I mean, you can reach me at magathyworkshop at gmail.com. I also have an Etsy page. Check out Magathy Workshop on Etsy. Great. Right now, your inventory is limited to what, cutting boards and 
Coasters? Cutting boards, coasters. Um, I do uh, uh, serving trays as well. I can also do benches. Um, so a lot of, you know, kind of the oh, smaller you, items. Mallets, yeah. too, right? Mallets as well. If you're yeah. from Maryland and you're a crab person, oh, you yeah. have mallets also. Here you go. There's yeah. a few others right here. So, yeah. yeah, these are nice, big, and heavy mallets, you know, kind of like one hit. And, I mean, the crab doesn't stand a chance. So I actually have another one of these that doubles as a hammer. So, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, this is another, uh, again, more pieces from uh, checkerboard cutting boards that uh, just get turned into mallets. So Awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, hey, guys, in the next video, Dave's going to take us through how to make one of his cutting boards. So subscribe and tune in for that. If you guys liked this video, uh, please check out Dave. Send him an email, buy some of his products. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please comment below. And I'll see you down in the comment section, Dave. Thanks for the tour of the shop, man. Appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. Until I see you guys again, get in the gym, take care of yourselves, and live your dream. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>